All right, what's up, guys? Here we go. Quick video. I'm going to show you an example of how we can actually use, believe it or not, um, solving quadratic equations in a real life scenario. Um, so you're going to be doing the same exact steps that we've just mastered, man. You're going to be factoring um, the quadratic equation once we get it all set up from the information that's given to us, and then we're going to, you know, factor it. We're going to use ZPP, zero product property, and then solve it. And then we're going to actually see what the overall answer to the question is. So let's dive into this example. What you can do is copy this down in your notes. I don't have any steps for you because we've already done them all in class. There are no different steps. It's just now we're applying it again to a real world, real life situation. So you see in this question here, we got find the dimensions of the, the actual figure. Find the dimensions of the figure. It's a rectangle. Area of the rectangle is 36 square feet. Immediately, here's what I see. I see it tells me area of a rectangle, and I remember from elementary school, area of a rectangle is just nothing more than base times the height. Base is this thing down here, can be, and you might know it as length times width, whatever. So this is the base, we'll call this the height, beautiful. So that being said, I know then since x minus 9, this is the actual expression, if you will, that's given to me that's representing the height, so I can plug that in for h, and x, just simply a little, little x here, is what's representing the base. So I could do x, representing the base, times the height, which is x minus 9. I can set that right side of my area equation up. Now here's what's cool. I also know the area of this particular rectangle is given to me to be 36 feet. So I want to take the 36 and plug it in for the area. So I get 36 for the area right there. So that's cool. So what I've just done is knowing some facts about area of rectangle and knowing what the formula is and knowing what's given to me, I've just translated what's given to me into my equation. So now what I have to do is solve this thing for x because ultimately, again, I'm looking for the dimensions of this rectangle. Well, let's do it. So that means I'm going to do this. I'm going to distribute the x through here, distribute the x through here, which gives me 36 equals x squared minus 9x. Oh, baby, looky there. That means I have myself a squared term here, so I'm looking at a quadratic equation. Oh, so I'm going to have to go through my steps. It's not in standard form because it's not equal to zero, so I must put it in standard form. How do I do that? I would subtract 36 from the left side and I subtract 36 from the right side, which means this disappears and I'm left with zero, oh yeah, equals x squared minus 9x um, minus 36. Beautiful. So, x squared minus 9x minus 36 is my equation. Now I got it exactly where we've seen this in class. So I'm going to speed up the video here. I'm going to show you how to do it. You need to pause the video and you need to do it yourself. And then on pause the video once you're done, once you actually get x solved, so x equals whatever number or x equals whatever number, and then see if I, uh, my answer matches yours. So again, pause the video, do this thing right here where you do the old Xbox thing. Well, not Xbox, just draw the X. I'm going to call it Xbox. You know what we've done in class. Hmm. So take that thing, factor this guy, ZPP it, get your X equals, and then I'll unpause the video and we'll go from there. So rock and roll, good luck. I'm going to do it as you do it. So here we go. Yay! Bam! There you go. So I, there's my two answers. I got X is either negative three or x is a positive 12. So through all of my factoring down here, equals 0, equals 0, equals 0, I use ZPP up here, got negative 3 or 12. I hope you got the same thing. Now here's the scoop. We have to answer the actual question. The overall question, again, is what's the dimensions of the figure? So now what I have to do is take these things and say, wait a minute, let's look and see which one of these work. Maybe they both do. Negative 3 is one of my possible solutions. So if I take that thing and put it back in here, 
I instantly see a problem. If I put negative 3 right there, I cannot, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot have a negative side length. Can't do it. It's impossible. If I put negative 3 here, that means I get negative 12 for that side length. That is, that's people, that's impossible. You can't have negative side length. So here's the scoop. What, what, what just actually happened was I showed you, or you just did it, you got a solution of negative 3 for this equation. But this solution in the overall question didn't actually work. So this one right here you have to disregard. And it's actually called this. And you can write it down because I'm going to, I'm kind of previewing for you. It's called an extraneous solution. It's a solution to the actual equation, but it actually doesn't work in the overall question that's given to you. Extraneous solution. So that one doesn't work, so we cross that one off. Now we got to check 12. Well, if I put 12 here, that makes sense. So 12 is this side. If I put 12 in there for x, that means that this side over here has to be a 3. So there we go. So the dimensions of this particular figure would be a 12 by 3 rectangle. And that's what I would write. I wouldn't just write 3 and 12. I wouldn't write x equals 12. I have to answer the question. Find the dimensions. So the dimensions here, so I'd write it. I'd write the dimensions. Forgive the writing of the rectangle. That's right. What is that spelling right there? I have no idea. Rectangle. Rectangle. R. 3 by 12. That's the answer to the question. So there you go. A real life question. Very simple with that regard, but we'll practice some of these in, qua in, in class. In class. Oh yeah. Waskowee Wabbit. In class. And rock and roll. We'll see you guys there later.